So in this video, I want to talk about finding internal reactions in a beam or a section. Um, so let's say we're given uh, a beam like this, simply supported beam, and you had a loading P. Well, what would you do if I was to tell you to cut it here and then find the internal reactions? Well, it's pretty straightforward. The first thing I would do is find the external reactions. So if this was A and B, uh, B here, this circle means it's a roller support, so it only has a reaction that's perpendicular to uh, the roller. So it's going to have a reaction this way. So I'll call that B in the Y direction. And at A, this is a pin support. So this is going to have a reaction that's perpendicular and a reaction that's horizontal. So this is going to have a Y and a reaction in the X direction. So I'll call that AX. Okay, so we find the external reactions. And we can do this by doing sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and sum of moments. We, sum of moments. we have our equilibrium equation. So sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y direction, and sum of moments. And you can pick a point, uh, whatever you feel is an artistic choice. Um, step two, you make the cut. And you choose a side. Um, really doesn't matter for something like this. You're going to notice as you do some of these problem side, not size, as you do some of these problems that one side is going to be easier than the other. So you have the freedom to choose whichever side you want to pick. So if I found those reactions, you know, I might pick, let's say, the left side, for instance. So this is a reaction in the Y. And the reaction is actually going to be zero, but I'll just put it in there since we're doing uh, just symbols anyway. So when you make the cut, um, the third step is going to be you're going to assume forces or internal forces. So when we make this cut, we're going to assume that there's a normal force. I always like to assume in tension. So if it's pulling away from the point, uh, that's considered in tension. So I'll call this uh, force, uh, I'll call it F uh, sub, I don't know if this is section A prime, A prime, so I'll call this F A. Um, and then there's going to be a shear force, which I assume to be downwards this way. So this is uh, when you're looking, when you're cutting, when you're looking at the beam from left to right and you disregard the right side of the beam, downward is generally considered positive. So I'll call this, oops, that isn't working. I'll call this. So I'll call this uh, downward shear to be VA. Shear is generally notated as V. Uh, and then also we're going to assume a positive moment, MA. So anytime you make a cut, you're going to have a shear force, a, an axial force, and a moment. And this is the positive sign convention um, when you disregard the right side of the cut. Now, on the left side of the cut, you're going to have equal and opposite. Remember, every force has an equal and opposite reaction. So, whatever, whichever direction you assume, it's going to have equal and opposite directions. So, the moment is going to be clockwise for positive. Um, the shear is going to be upwards for positive, and the axial force 
is going to be pulling away from the cuff. So that's your sign convention for positive moment shear and axial force. And you, you know that this is the correct convention because when you, when you put this side and this side together, the VAs cancel out because they're equal and opposite. The MAs are equal and opposite, so they cancel out. The, for, uh, the axial forces cancel out, so you're left back with uh, your original beam. Uh, of course, there's still a P load there and a BY here. So, and the last step is once you choose, um, so let's say if I just chose this left-hand side, well, I will use uh, my equations of equilibrium again to find MA, FA, and BA. So again, we'll use our uh, equations of equilibrium. So let's do an example so that this, these concepts are more concrete. So we want to find the internal reactions at uh, cut AA or A prime A prime and B prime B prime. So like I wrote here, the first thing you want to do is find external reactions. That's generally the, th the thing that you want, the first step that you want to do. But really, uh, and, and it's okay to do that, but when you look at this, when you look at the top part here, you can technically cut this without finding the reactions and find the internal uh, reactions at A prime, A prime. Uh, that's because when, when we dis, uh, discard the bottom cut, there, there aren't any reactions, so that doesn't even get in the way. So really, we can find this right away. But if you, if you want to keep things methodical, you can always solve for the reactions first. But just, just to show you that you can do this, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to have to find the reactions anyway to, to solve for B, uh, the cut at B. So here's A prime, A prime. So I'm going to assume tension. Um, I'm, I'm viewing it from as if I was standing here. So if I straighten that beam, I'm going to say down is my positive shear and counterclockwise is my positive moment. So this is M A F A and capital B A. Okay, and this is four inches. A little crowded but hope that it's clear enough okay so the first thing I would do is sum of forces in the X direction I'm gonna say right is positive uh, okay so then that equals zero because everything is in static equilibrium nothing's moving so what are my forces in the X direction I got a 250 pound going to the left, so that's negative. Then I have VA going to the left, so that's also negative, and that should be it. So that means my VA is going to be negative 250 pounds. So that means our assumed direction of going left is incorrect because of this negative here. So that means it's actually going to the right. So I usually make a note to myself that uh, in, even though the negative is there, just so it's clear for me, I like to put parentheses with the direction that it's going, actually going. Um, next, we can do sum of forces in the Y. I generally choose up to be positive. And that's equal to zero. Well, the only force is going to be FA, which is negative FA, and that's just zero. There's nothing else to, uh, there's no other external forces. So f of a is just zero. And lastly, we can do sum of moments, and we can pick any point. Um, but I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick a. So uh, f a and b a uh, vanishes. We won't have to worry about that. Although f a is going through the axis anyway. But so if I take the moment about a prime, 
And I'm going to say counterclockwise is positive. I generally do counterclockwise is positive. We have MA, which is going counter counterclockwise, plus, well, this 250 is, is trying to push this member to go counterclockwise, so that's positive. 200 pound, 250 pounds uh, times the distance from the our point A prime to the force is four inches. Um, but we're getting units uh, when we multiply two uh, pounds and inches, we're going to get pound inches, and that's not that's not a conventional unit. So I'm going to switch this to feet right away. So if I divide by 12 I should get feet units. So then my MA, if I compute this, should be negative 83.3 pound foot. And because it's negative, it's not going counterclockwise as we initially had assumed, it's going to be going clockwise. So I'm going to draw my arrow in there. So we have this answer, this answer, this answer for the internal reactions at section A prime, A prime. So now if you want to find, if you want to make the cut at B prime, B prime, uh, we can't solve it as is because we don't know the reaction at E. Um, so I'm going to solve for the external reactions. So we know that there's going to be, since this is a roller, there's only going to be a perpendicular reaction, so this is going to be EY. And at D, we're going to have a reaction in the Y direction and also a reaction in the X direction. So now I'm going to do some of the forces in the X. I mean, I can choose it in any order, but I'm just going to do some of the forces in the X because uh, I know I can find dx right away. Uh, let's see, in the x we have negative 250 pounds right here, plus dx is going to the right, so that's positive. So dx is just going to be 250 pounds, and we assume the direction correctly, hence the positive sign, so it's going to the right. Um, now, I could do some of the forces in the y, but I'm going to have two unknowns. So what what we can do is do some of the for, or some of the moment, and we can take it about point D, because then we have dx and dy going through that point we're taking a moment about, so we won't have to consider those forces. And if you look at it, the only the only unknown that will be considered in our some of the moment equation will be uh, ey. So let's do some of the moment about D. And I'm going to assume counterclockwise to be positive. And that's going to equal 0. Oop, I forgot. Uh, some of the forces in the x, this should equal 0. That's how we figured out 250, uh, in case you were wondering. Um, so again, some of the moment about d is going to equal 0. So we have that 250 uh, pound, which is going to cause it to rotate counterclockwise about point d. So that's positive. 250 um, and the distance from D to that force the perpendicular distance is 4 plus 4 inches so 8 inches and again I'm going to convert that to feet right away by dividing by 12 um, so our next force is this 400 pound and that's going to cause it to rotate clockwise around D so that's going to be negative 400 and the, dis the perpendicular distance from 400, or the 400 pound load to point D is 10 inches. So I'm going to convert that to feet. And EY is tr uh, trying to rotate this beam in a counterclockwise fashion, so it's going to be positive. EY times the perpendicular distance is 10 plus 3 plus 3. So that's 16 over 12 feet. Okay, so if we compute all this and get EY by itself, we should get positive 125 pounds. And because it's positive, we assume the direction correctly, it is going up. 
So now we have EY. Last but not least, we can find uh, the only unknown, which is our uh, dy, a reaction at d in the y direction. So some of the forces in the y, I'll assume up is positive. That's going to equal zero. So we have dy, which is up. We have ey, which is 125 pounds up. So that's positive. And 400 pounds down, so that's negative. Um, and if we solve for dy, we should get 275 pounds positive. So our assumed direction was correct, and it is moving up. So now that we have all of our reactions, external reactions, we can actually make the cut. Now, when we make the cut at B prime, B prime, the artistic choice would be to discard everything to the left of the cut because there's less less going on to the right of it. So I want to make my life as easy as possible and get rid of all that stuff. Although at that 250 pound force, the 400 pound force, the uh, DX and DY will disappear and I can just worry about uh, the reaction EY. So let's see, let me copy this down. So we have a roller here. So we have EY going up 125 pounds. So this is E, this is B prime, B prime. So now I made the cut. I have to assume my forces. So this is my axial force and tension, my shear force in the positive direction and my moment in the positive direction at B. So, just like we did in the first cut, we just have to do sum of force, the equilibrium equations, and solve for FB. Oh, this should be VB. Shear B, the axial force at B, and the moment at B. So let's do sum of forces in the Y. That equals zero. We have VB going up, so that's positive, plus 125 pounds going up, so that's positive. So that means our VB is negative 125 pounds. So that negative tells us our assumed direction for VB was incorrect, so it should be going down. So we got VB. Um, I'm going to do sum of forces in the X direction in order to find FB. Right is positive, doesn't matter because the only thing we have is FB, so our axial force at B is equal to zero. Last but not least, if we want to solve for the moment at B, we can do the sum of the moment at B prime. Counterclockwise is positive, that should equal zero. Um, or you can you can do sum of the moment at point E too, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to choose B prime. So we have MB. That's actually going clockwise, so that's negative. I assume to be to be going clockwise. Plus this 125 pounds is trying to make this section go counterclockwise about B prime. So that's positive. So 125 pounds. And this distance, this perpendicular distance, is three inches. So this is 3 inches, which is 3 over 12 feet. This VB is at the point uh, we're taking a moment about, so it goes through that point, so we do not consider it. Uh, FB is 0, but even if it wasn't 0, it's going through the point, um, so we wouldn't consider that either. So when we compute this, the moment B should be 31.25 pound foot. Uh, and, and our direction is correct, our assumed direction is correct, so it's going clockwise. So, we have, in this video, we learned how to find the internal reactions of a beam and section uh, using our equilibrium equations.